the blood glucose elevating effects of, of short wavelength light at night seem pretty ubiquitous. For people, which I think is most people nowadays, who are under LED lighting a significant portion of the day in a building with glass that filters the bright sunlight to control the temperature uh, and make sure there isn't a lot of you know glaringly bright light coming in at certain phases of the day, they certainly should try and get outside yeah. When they can't take their lunch outside, take a, yeah. a, a call outside, get, get outside. But they may need to, or choose to, excuse me, supplement with a halogen or incandescent, yeah. even just table lamp for a short period of time now and again, especially it seems in winter, this would be beneficial. Yeah. And where I worry the most about uh, light environments as it relates to diminishing mitochondrial function is in kids who are staring at screens not getting outside enough because of screens, et cetera, classrooms, et cetera. What do we know about screen light? But the blood glucose elevating effects of, of short wavelength light at night seem pretty ubiquitous. There's a study, I don't know if you're familiar with it, um, it was done, it was published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. They had um, people, I think it was kids actually, sleep under a 100 lux overhead light. So their eyes are closed. 100 lux is very dim. And yeah. as compared to complete darkness, or it wasn't complete darkness, I think it was a uh, like a one to 10 lux lighting yeah. condition, you saw elevated blood morning glucose, yeah. which is not good, right? That, that reflects a cortisol increase. So it's not just about sleep, it's about blood glucose regulation, et cetera. 